Come on, guys. This way. This way. Come on. So as you can tell and see, this video is going to be a little bit different. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to read you the very first comment that's going to come up here. Welcome to the Museum of Orphaned Concepts, a guided tour of ideas that Irrational Games discarded or reworked heavily during the making of the original Bioshock. Now here in a minute, I'm going to go through this museum. What I'm going to do is I'm actually, I'm, I'm, going, to get, I'm going to get rid of me, okay? It's just going to be my voice. I'm going to try and read all this stuff for you. And if I'm not going fast enough or if I don't get something in it, I will either A, try and redo it, and you won't see the mess up, or two, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let you pause it and you can read the rest if I miss something, okay? But it's it's really interesting. I thought it would be fun for anybody who wants a little bit more backstory how Bioshock came to be. So I'm going to go, and it's just going to be my voice now, okay? See ya. All right, guys, so I'm back. Back right here again. But... Ryan presents the Kickettes. Two weeks only. But yeah, I, I did this because I, I don't I don't want me as a distraction for you. I I figured I'd just only have voice. That way you guys can go ahead on your own as you need. We already read that part. And I'll try and read it for you as quickly as I can. But I just thought it was interesting to, you know, you can see the where it all started, how it came to be, what, you know, not everything when you first have a, you know, big grand idea sometimes maybe is not the final product. All right, let's see here. Irrational's artist tried to envision how an underwater city would actually function in its early conceptual work of Rapture. One idea imagined a thick forest for the purpose of oxygen exchange. Seen here with an observation catwalk running around the edge, the con concept of using trees for oxygen. And I'm sorry it cut off. Apparently I did not go slow enough in my walkthrough. And these, believe it or not, are actually the first renderings of horror and also the first <laughs> renderings of what would become the little sister. It may be hard to imagine that this creature whose job is to reclaim Adam from corpses around Rapture was the earliest illustration idea behind the eye behind the little sister so right there they even thought including a dog in a wheelchair and they figured that would be you know kind of grotesque and next thing you know they came up with the concept of little sisters so that's right there your your beginning of having the 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 whole concept of a creepy kid do it <laughs> irrationals internal name of this prototype Big Daddy was Variant, who mauled players with an enormous hook and fired iron bearings from a barrel. That would be pretty cool, honestly. I don't know about anybody else. And a rumbler throwing miniature cannonballs, which, I don't know, I would, I would definitely like to try and fight that Big Daddy right there. The original model for the bouncer type of Big Daddy, flat-headed drill, Envisioned as the builders of Rapture with weapons modified from tools they would have used in construction. Well, that makes sense. And again, I'm I'm not I'm not reading the whole thing. I'm trying to paraphrase and get as much normal detail. Normal detail as much as of the the chunk of detail as I can. Let's come over here see what these are. You're kind of cool. Early splicer concept. Moving from grotesque to human was a slow process. While early concepts saw the melee enemies grew monstrous arms, the team had trouble con conveying how someone who had spliced had become that way, I guess. Is this going to say the same thing? Oh, Big Daddy. Early concepts for Rosie, the type of Big Daddy who, like the bouncer, was envisioned as a construction worker and had been repurposed as a protector. Okay, and this is like a, a more high-definition rendering of that same thing. Yep. That's... I, I see where it's it's got... You know, of course, as we all know, it's... The origins of it is, you know, a diver's mask. What are you? Hi, how are you doing? 
Stitchy, the first splicer that Irrational created for Bioshock, was used main, mainly many early concept demos and was fully functional in-game. It took us that long to realize he wasn't a good model, says lead artist. This is probably the worst... Eeh. I mean, could you imagine fighting this thing in Bioshock? I mean, that that's that's a big that's a big thing. Oh, the the drawings are even more detailed. I mean, he's got this thing coming out the side of him. He's all stitched up, missing an arm. I guess that's similar to the other early splicer. Some of the first con first concept sketches to show Bioshock's enemies moving in more human-like direction. Idea that Adam deformed the body. You kind of look like the hillbilly from Dead by Daylight. Deformed the body in a way related to its intended fu function. For instance, a giant grotesque arm on a melee enemy. Well, I guess that makes sense. I, I can see where I mean, th this is all starting out pre yam hand before sol solidifying the fiction around Adam. Rational experiment with the idea of being an external injected substance. Here you can see us playing around with Adam being mechanically injected, said lead artist. So this splicer's got vials on its belt. Hmm. All right. So it's it's kind of like hooked up to kind of like a, a an IV in a way so where it's just always going in kind of getting resident evil evil within kind of vibes with it which i mean you know this this stuff was back before the evil within stuff Protector concept art. Originally called Protectors were envision, envisioned as dive-suited construction workers retasked with the defense of Atom Gatherers. Used construction tools, improvised weapons, looked what they need to have as I trail off and I didn't get to read the rest of that. The one with the hook arm is pretty cool. I really dig that one. That would, that would even make a cool tattoo, honestly. <laughs> Ooh, you you bigger than the other one, you big brother. This was the Grenader. In the same period of development as Stitchy and Hooker, was a guy who spliced to carry around giant grenades and throw them at you, says lead artist. The model was built and textured, but never animated. That looks like it could have been in-game, all right. And then, of course, you got everything that's interchangeable, everything on the back that would need animation kind of almost going a little bit more Frankenstein on that which I don't know I, I think it'd be pretty interesting to play a game that had just the original creations in it early environmental study the location depicted here was built for the vision demo of Bioshock a small level demonstrating several of the key elements of the game alright oh, I remember that scene Yep, Neptune's Bounty. This area appears in Neptune's Bounty level of Bioshock, but the bodies floating in the ocean were cut late in development, so their cast shadows prove to interacting with the light, I think is what that said. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm not reading it quick enough, but I don't want to read it quick enough. I can't understand. Hooker created around the same time as Stitchy and Grenader. Stubbed Hooker because of her weapons of choice. Concept evolved into the Spider Splicer. Decided that Splicer models could fill any behavior role. Hooker model later became Baby Jane Splicer. Okay. Kind of like... It's kind of got Hellraiser kind of going on to it. That's that's what I get from it. The The one... The one demon with with all well, ironically the the hooks. As well. It 
Step, 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 step. All right, we're we're about halfway through, folks. There's a big daddy. This is the early concept of putting a big daddy bursting through a wall was inspired the audio log in the big daddy training grounds rogue big daddy the player then encountered him in the end of the level oh yes i do remember you Ooh, substation sub bay concept art this is concept sketch depicting what would later become submarine bay an area Gosh darn, I went too quick. I am, again, this is why I, I did this. I'm trying to read it, but you guys can pause it if you're even watching this video this time. Missing Link model. Designs and human splicers that appeared in Bioshock. This is the last bad model for moving on to act, what actually went into shipping game, says lead artist. After playing with him for a while, we just said, why don't we use humans instead? <laughs> Scooby Doo monsters because <laughs> Scooby Doo monsters. I, I I I totally get that. I I I can see it. Totally see the whole Scooby Doo vibe going on here. Ooh, you're creepy and kooky and altogether spooky. This was the fourth protector concept originally created as an organic slug attached to it. A model was started, never completed. I still liked this protector. We started modeling and really pushed to get it in, even just a static model on the floor, but it never made it. I think that's pretty cool, just the fact that, yeah, you had some big daddies that are like still them somewhat. This is one of the several paintings that tried to portray the most important elements of Rapture at once. These images will help define the ruined underwater art deco aesthetic that the team was attempting to capture. Yeah, it looks like a Vita chamber right there. Well, how are you two doing? Early creature concepts. These were some of the earliest pieces done for Bioshock from back when Irrational was still working on SWAT 4. The only concrete ideas at the point were an undersea city and biological experiments, so early concepts focused on those themes. I can see it. Totally see it. Again, getting more more Dead Space, Resident Evil kind of vibes where, you know, you messed with stuff and you shouldn't have messed with stuff. This character, diversely called Yam Hand around Irrational Games, was poster child of the conceptual phase that preceded the decision to go with human enemies. I'd point out the drawings behind the model. You can see the top one got built, but the other two informed the design as well as tended... More towards the Scooby Doo. <laughs> Just in the big sack over its head. <laughs> and that kind of looks like a dinosaur tail or a Loch Ness monster kind of vibe. Those are pretty cool. Oh, I, I like the, the Scooby Doo rendering of it. It's like, well, before we prove this any further, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make one that actually looks like it. This was the first image that really captured all the viral element, visual elements that made Bioshock Bioshock. A large view of the ocean, aquatic lighting scene, and I'm going to say elegant fixtures and architecture because I'm not sure what that said. Because I don't get to pause this video right now. Oh, I know that place. Fleet Hall concept art for Sander Cohen's Fleet Hall was created after level building had begun when the designers found they were having difficulty conceptualizing the theater space. It was one of the earliest spaces built for Bioshock and many of the assets used in this museum come from that area. I did not know that. That's pretty neat. So, like, you wanted Fleet Hall to kind of look like this, I guess, and said, no, you know, we like it. Can I go in this door? That would be really cool if I could go in that door. Wait, there's there's another door. There's another door on the other side. Is, is there any goodies? No, not there. Not there. It, it was... Ah, it was over here. 
me just casually, calmly walk down the stairs and walk up these stairs over here to this door. Do I get a surprise behind door number two? Oh. Well, that's all I have time for today, folks. All you peeps, folks, and dudes, stay awesome. I'll say what I normally say. Say bye. Have a good day. And I'll see you in the next one. See ya.